All right, those who invite people on for Facebook, we can um, proceed with that. Proceed on the blessings with the song and, and turn your Bibles to the book of Ruth. Yeah. 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 In a world where men don't believe, all the Christians have tried it, trying to make it, and the devil's always busy trying to destroy to the sea. Don't you know what God said to His people? To all of us who profess to believe that he's got the whole world in his hands and pray the only way that he'll heal the land in my people who are called by my name. We're just on the road. I'm on the and pray. He said, if my people will call by my name. We're just humble. Get on your knees sometime and offer themselves and pray. Oh, pray and believe that their words will be heard by me. Oh, Would be heard by me. Oh, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. He said, I'll heal the land. Yes, he did. Say, I'll heal the land. Oh, yes, he will. Read 
you for yourself. I know he said. Oh, yes, he did. He said, I heal the man. Yes, he did. He said, I heal the man. Oh, yes, he did. If you win, believe the Lord said, I heal the man. Oh, 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 yes, indeed. For all who sees this, for all, all, all the pain, trust and believe that the Lord will heal the man. Oh, yes, I will heal the land. I will heal the land. Amen, amen. I ask you to stand and turn your, your Bibles to the book of Ruth. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers. Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth. Who wants to finish out the Bible after that? 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, 1 Kings, 2 Kings, 1 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles, etc. So on and on and on. We thank God for that song. And I think in what we're dealing with now, everybody has a position. And your position might be to pray. Amen. Many positions of people to yield toward the cause we're talking about now. And we need some people to uh, protest. protest and take up their sword and they, they thing that Brother Payne had. That big thing like this right here. So we need everybody got a spot. That's right. There's no big eyes and none of you. Everybody got their space and we're not going to put anybody down for their space. Everybody feel their space. But if my space is to get that thing Brother Payne had and take care of some business, that's my space, right? And we need all hands on deck. And uh, everybody got a space as long as we, uh, yeah, as long as we in it together to uh, uh, right the wrong in the land, to heal the land. Amen. God's not going to send an angel down here to heal the land. We're going we're gonna to have to do this ourselves. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, and I, I've been praying for a while. Not, not, uh, now is the time. Now is the time. Not tomorrow or not when. It's, it's about doing it now. Amen. I told a uh, uh, pastor friend of mine who has <clears throat> uh, some young teenager boys. He said, man, every time my, I bought my son a car, every time he leaves the house, I'm on hands and knees. Right. Say so he's a good kid. Matter of fact, he just graduated from the University of Alabama. Yeah. I don't like Bama Jama because I'm a Georgia, Georgia Bulldog. But uh, anyhow, he graduated. He said, my son has never caused any problems. Just like a perfect son, he says, but I fear that when he's driving somewhere, some fool will pull him over, yeah. harass him, and kill him. He said, I don't need to live like this. And it's not right. Right is right and wrong is wrong. So I don't care who it is. The devil works through people. So we're going to get into the word today. Amen. It's been hard for me this past week to sleep. And my wife even tried to talk to me about this stuff going on. I was like, I don't want to talk about it. I don't, I don't want to talk about it. I don't, I don't look at CNN. I don't want to look at it. Because anything else on TV, I can look at it. 
because it's so frustrating and it's so so wrong. See, so uh, as a man with the spirit of God in me, I I, I hate wrong. Okay, if it's your child or my child or somebody else's child or individual, wrong is wrong. That's just how I see life. Um, my boys asked me before they said now. Because uh, they had a foot, a basketball coach, one of them did, who uh, favored his son. His son should not have been in the game. Well, I feel my son should have been in the game. And other people in the stand, man, where they going to put your son in? Put his son in. So they asked me, they said, well, Daddy, you would do the same thing if you were the coach. I said, No. If you don't deserve to be in, no matter you're my son, you're not going to get in. You know what I'm saying? It's not about favoritism. It's not about the privilege that you're the coach's son. You get to be in the game when somebody else's child is a better player than you. I don't believe in that. Right? We got another incident when uh, my son up here Everybody on the team, all the parents, everybody that came to see the games, felt like he should have been the MVP of the team. But guess who got the MVP? The coach's son. <laughs> and, 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 and <laughs> he can play that much. That much on the league. <laughs> And so uh, when, the, when the coach announced the MVP, who we at the banquet? Everybody said, no, just everybody. Wow. Well, being the coach of some, you got some perks. Yeah, I'm supposed to. I'm sorry, I'm not supposed to. Not if the laws of your land say equal opportunity right. for all people. Not if your constitution says that. Man, your constitution said there's there's a favoritism for a certain group of people. Okay. Then we can live with that. We know what we're working with. Yeah. But if it says equal rights, right. take it out. I mean, if it doesn't mean that, take it out. Take it out. Unless it means equal rights rights for a certain people. Right. Well, I didn't say perks. Perks. Okay. Perks. Uh, you that type. You that type. Perks. Okay. <laughs> Uh, privileged. Okay. Some people got to have privilege because without it, they would not even survive. It would not survive. Perks. What is per perks and privilege the same thing, I think? All right, so we're going to see what Ruth says about all this, all right? Yeah, it's <laughs> That's favor. <laughs> That's favor of God, right? Yeah. Uh, drop some handfuls on purpose, on purpose, or root. We, 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 we're going to read verses 1 through 4 in chapter 1. And of course, this book, well, I, I, I will talk about it a little while. There's so much, so much in here that, uh, you know, we might have to go on Zoom and have a Bible study in the book of Ruth this summer because it's a, it's a lot right here. But we're just going to start off right now by reading. Chapter 1, verses um, 1 through 4 for our text. I believe, I believe that the Bible is, Bible is the inspired, the inherent word of God, and it's the final authority for my life. Amen. Amen. All right, ready to say read. Now it came to pass in the days when the judges grew that there was a famine in the land. And a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. And the name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife, Naomi, and the name of his two sons, Marlon and Chilean, Ephronites of Bethlehem, Judea. And they came into the country of Moab and continued there. And Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died. 
And she was left and her two sons. And they took them wives of the one of the The name of the one was Ophir, and the name of the other Ruth. And they dwelt there about ten years. Let's go to verse five, okay? And Marlon and Chilion died also, both of them. And the one was left with her two sons. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, we just thank you for this time right now. We ask that you would forgive us for our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. We ask you to fill us with your precious Holy Spirit today. We ask that your word will go forth in demonstration and power of the Holy Spirit. We're in a spiritual battle. The battle is not ours, but it is the Lord's. We thank you that you are the God of victory, you're the God of miracles. And God, we thank you for, 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 uh, for winning the battle that we're in right now. We ask the Lord that you would speak to our hearts. In your son's name we pray. Amen. 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 You may have your seat. Amen. <clears throat> There's so many avenues to take with um, sharing this message with you from the book of Ruth. Uh, I think that the best way for us to do it is to um, approach this four weeks, taking one chapter possibly at, at the time. So we're going to uh, park our tabernacle bus in the book of Ruth for four weeks. Is that okay? Is that okay? okay. Amen. Because um, it's so rich. So what I want to do today, I'm gonna I'm gonna be all over the place. All right, be all over the place, and uh, and uh, so uh, and we're gonna get a picture of Ruth. But then we gonna we'll start today a little bit, go into each chapter. It may take us five weeks. Come and think about it. And to each chapter and pull out those things that God has for us. So the title of the message, title of this series is God is Working. God is Working. God is Working. So just here's some things we want to say about Ruth first of all. <clears throat> Ruth was a Moabitish princess of noble character. She became the great grandmother of King David. She was dissatisfied with the idol worship of her own people, the Moabites. And when the opportunity arose, she gladly gave up the privileges of royalty in her land and accepted a life of poverty amongst people she admired. Let me say that again. Ruth, according to my study, was a Moabitess princess. Oh, princess, right? That's what women are, princes, right? Princess, princess. But when opportunity came, and as a prince, she, princess, she, uh, she, she of course, embraced the gods of Moab, and she had a high position in the land of Moab. But when the opportunity came, after she heard about the God of Israel, she willingly forsook all that royal life. And she told her mother-in-law, Naomi, your people are going to be my people. Your God is going to be my God. Amen, somebody. Uh, Naomi says, no, 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 stay here, stay here, stay here. I can't have another son, and if I did, are you going to stay until they get old enough to marry you? She said, I don't care about that. I don't care about being the princess of Moab. I don't care about my position 
in this land of Moab, I need to embrace the God of Israel. Amen. Somebody. Whatever it takes, I want to embrace him. Amen. The book of Ruth follows the book of Judges. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth. Judges teaches that evil must be purged. Purged. How do you purge something? Okay, y'all look that up when you get a chance to. Judges teaches, the book of Judges, when you read the book of Judges, it teaches that evil has to be purged. In other words, you can't talk to evil. You can't rationalize with evil. You got to be stupid with evil. Okay, y'all get that next week sometime. You can't, uh, you can't like just give evil money and tell evil to go away. You have you ever tried to talk to somebody with evil on their mind? That's you know, some of us call it stupid. You know, they just stupid in the mind. And you try to sit down and you you got a good mind. You try to rationally talk to them about evil. What happens? It backfires on you, right? But if you go in there acting stupid, we're stupid sometimes. Yeah, I'm gonna leave it alone. They might get the message. They be like, you're crazier than me. Yes, and I can be crazier than this right here if you keep pushing me. Get yourself somewhere and set down. Judges teaches that evil must be purged, whatever it costs. Sometimes you're dealing with people, you're dealing with your children or loved ones or rather, you might say, they may not speak to me for the rest of our lives. But I'm going to tell them the truth, no matter what it costs. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Why, evil has to be purged. Evil, the Bible says some people have compassion making a difference, but others save with fear, snatching them out of the fire. You got to act stupid sometimes and crazy. Y'all understand what I'm saying? The book of Judges teaches that society as a whole, the only way evil is going to be solved is that society as a whole must stand against evil. In other words, you got one thing of society saying this and the other thing in society saying this. The society is going to be confused and jacked up from the floor up because it's as a whole they got to stand up. You understand what I'm saying? I can see y'all remember how that we looked last Sunday in the book in, uh, about Abraham. And Abraham told Sarah, he said, tell these people you are my wife. And then uh, you're my sister. And then, and then, and then when when uh, Pharaoh Abimelech confronted Abraham, Abraham said he didn't know that the fear of God was in that place. Yeah. Why? Because if your society said you can just take somebody's wife, kill the man, and take the wife, and everything is all right because you did it, I got to tell her to lie. You understand know what I'm saying? So I can keep myself alive. In other words, uh, uh, but uh, uh, Elimelech, Abimelech says, man, you bring that evil on me. Yeah. Y'all understand what I'm saying? So <laughs> we're in the same situation. We are not the type of people that just take your wife like that. You understand what I'm saying? Even, uh, society as a whole has to stand together to combat evil. If I do something... My group of people say it's okay because I did it. And these other group of people say it's not okay. What are you going to have in a society? You're going to have chaos and confusion. When you read the book of Judges, it teaches us that society must take a stand against evil. Now, one thing about the book of Judges is that if you look right over there in the last verse of the book of Judges, it says, in those days, there was no king in Israel. Judges 21, 25. Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Now, it's been a long time, but it's not 2020 now. I'm just saying this has been a long time. Whenever it was right. I, I wasn't even alive back then. 
Everybody did what was right in their own eyes. Did they have laws? Yes, they had laws. But the laws applied to certain people. If you were, every society has laws. But if, just say we have laws here in the church, and the law applies to all the members, but it doesn't apply to the pastor. Okay, what you got right there? Chaos. So even though you have law in the land, if this person does something, they can get away with it because he's of a certain group. And this other people do the same thing and can't get away with it because of the law. But what about the law for that person? Well, the law is for you, not for him. You got confusion. Everybody did what was right in his own eyes and could get away with it because they were of certain groups. It says there was no king at yeah, Ruth chapter uh, in, uh, Judges chapter uh, 21, 25, there was no king. That means Israel had no solid leader. They didn't have any leader that they could trust. Every time they got in trouble, they would call on God and God was sent a judge, Samson, Deborah, uh, who else? Other judges in, in, uh, uh, in, 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 in the book of Judges. Let's read through the book of Judges. Judges raging up. They didn't have a leader. They only cried to God when they got in trouble. And he would hear their cry and give them a leader. The book of Ruth has four chapters and 85 verses. The book has what we call both lows and highs. There are very low points, very low points in the book. There's some things in the book of Ruth that make you question God. You wonder, is that right? Or why did that happen? So there are lows in Ruth, but there are also highs. You can see the hand of God working. You can see the providence of God moving on things. The book of Ruth, uh, the reader, when you read the book of Ruth, you cannot stop in chapter 1, nor can you start in chapter 4. Uh, the Bible scholars say that the book was written so that you may read it chapter 1 to chapter 4 in one setting in order to really see what God is doing. Just bear with me. It is a book of turnarounds. Somebody say turnaround. 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 Turn There's always room to turn around. If you're going down the wrong street, God allows you to turn around. That means there's room to get it together. There might be some suffering as you're going down the wrong street, but there's room to get it together. It's a book of turnarounds. Amen. Uh, 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 uh. God, in the book of Ruth shows us that God is involved in the affairs of our lives. God is involved. Even when you can't see him, he's involved. He's working. Oh, another thing in the book of Ruth is we have to be careful about the moves, M-O-B-E-S, that we make in our lives. You know how you tell yourself, I need to make a move. I need to make a move. Or in other words, I need to do something about this situation. Especially when life is not going good. You know, I need to make a move. Ruth teaches us, you got to be careful about the moves you make. Because the move you make, you might be in a bad situation right now and you feel like, I got to make a move. The move that you make might end, make, you may make a, a move that makes bad worse. Or worse, worse, sir. You know what I'm saying? Because that's how we do when things get bad. We're like, I got to do something about this situation. 
Sometimes you got to be careful. Because you don't want to go from bad to worse, right? Now, the move you make, you want it to be a good move. To bring you out of a bad situation into a better situation. But Ruth teaches us, be careful about the moves you make. You're suffering right now, this week. If you make a move tomorrow, that might be a move that next week you're going to be suffering on top of suffering. <laughs> you were like, I, I, I'm worse this week than I was last week. Then I need to make a move to get out of that. That's going to put you in the deeper hole. I got to make a move to get out of that. Be careful about the moves you make. Amen? Amen. Well, the book of Ruth also teaches us that we never know what God is doing behind the scenes. God is like a behind the scenes person. And then he's always working, but he might be working behind the scenes. And you can't not trace his hand and say trust his heart. When you can't see his hand, trust his heart. You know he loves you. You know you got a plan and purpose for your life. You may not see his hand in your life or your situation right now, but trust his heart. Amen? Trust him. The word, the name of Ruth means to cure thirst. If you're thirsty, Ruth means to cure your thirst. It also means to see the truth. See the truth, Ruth. Also in the book of Ruth, <clears throat> We see God's judgment upon bad decision making. God's judgment upon bad decision making. Um, there are only two books in the Bible that are named after a woman. Ruth is one of them. What's the other book? Esther. Esther. Yep. Ruth deals one of the two books in the Bible that's named after a woman. This book shows, this book also shows what it means to be fully committed. Somebody say fully committed. Fully what committed. does it mean to be fully committed to someone? We see that in the book of Ruth. And then we also see that this book shows us the amazing hand of God. God has a hand, and his hand is a work. All right, y'all ready to get into chapter one now? Amen, amen, amen. Let's get into chapter one of the book of Ruth. The book of Ruth, chapter one. Verse one says, It came to pass in the days when the judges ruled. Let me say this also. Bible scholars say that perhaps Samuel is the author of the book of Ruth. That Samuel possibly wrote the book. We don't know that for 100% sure, but they attribute the writer to Samuel. It came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land. A famine in the land. And a certain man of Bethlehem, Judea, went to sojourn in the country of Moab he and his wife and his two sons. There was a famine in Bethlehem. The word Bethlehem means house of bread. Get this. There was a famine in the house of bread. You know what a famine is, right? That means no food, no supply. The house of bread is dried up. There's no bread in the house of bread. And throughout the Bible, if you trace the Bible, the teachers of the Bible, it tells us that God only allowed famines in the house of bread when the people of the house of bread lived in disobedience to God. So it tells us that something is going wrong in Bethlehem to do. We see in the book of Judges, people doing whatever they want to do. 
we see that there is no leader in the land. So the great God above brings about a famine in the land. Why? Because people are not following the ways of the Lord. You're doing what you want to do. There's too much injustice in the land. There's too much confusion in the land. There's violence in the land. There's killing in the land. There's uh, lawlessness in the land. So the great God above, he brings a famine on the land. I'm going to curse the land because the people of the land are not doing what they're supposed to do. When people talk about this coronavirus, say, well, maybe God is telling us that we're not treating the earth right. But according to the scripture, it doesn't mean that we're not treating the earth right. It means that we're not treating the creator of the earth right. Right. The earth didn't bring the famine. Okay. If you believe that the coronavirus is because the earth is revolting against people, the earth can't bring the coronavirus. But the God who created the earth can bring it. So in order to get it cured, you got to get it right, not with the earth. You got to get it right with the creator. Oh, the there was a famine in the land. Why was there a famine in the land? It seemed like it was because of disobedience. So, in order to get the cure, we got to do what? We got to obey in order to get the cure. Now, be careful what the moves you make. Now, uh, Elimelech whose name means my God is king. <laughs> I think y'all missed that name. He, he, you know, the famine in the land, he probably tried to wait it out for a few minutes or a few years or something, but then he looks at his wife, uh, 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 what's her name? Naomi. Naomi. And said, you know, baby, you know, uh, I got a friend who lives down in Moab. You got a friend in Moab? Yeah, just a friend I just kept from my past. We just kicked it sometime, and you know, he told me he got some bread in Moab. And uh, I just been thinking, maybe we need to go to Moab. I mean, I got a responsibility to kick, take care of you, baby, and I got a responsibility to kick, take care of our sons. And so, if ain't no bread here, I got the, I got a responsibility to go somewhere and find some bread for y'all. Because I mean, I'm a man. I'm a real man. Ain't no sweet man. I'm a real man. And as a man, I got to take care of my responsibility. So, uh, you know what? I think I'm gonna make a move. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm gonna head to Moab. And my, my partner said, I, we can stay with him. And um, they got bread in Moab. But baby, you know, God said, don't deal with the Moabite's people like that because they got all those I idols and stuff like that. They might have bread. They might have bread, but they don't have the God, the God. that we worship. Y'all miss that, didn't you? They might have bread. But they ain't God. Well, you can stay if you want to. You know, I ain't giving you another wife. But uh, I ain't going to stay here and starve to death. She said, well, if you leave, I can leave too. And because ain't nobody else going to have me as a wife around here because I'm still married to you. And I got my two boys. And so if you go, I'm going to go too. So she almost didn't have a choice, they say. Now, some people say, Sister Robinson, that she was the one that nagged him to go to Moab. <laughs> you know a black woman got to eat now. I don't care if it's a famine or not. You got to go find me some food. Yeah. I told my wife, you feed a black woman some potato salad and some chicken. She's going to be all right, right? <laughs> And they got to have air conditioning in their car. Yeah, they can be yeah. hot. Yeah. And, and in the house, they got to have air and air. You got to feed them and you got to give them some air. 
Well, they say she probably been the one that was bugging them like that. Then you're going to have to do something. Hey, God, I brought a family in the land. What can I do? I don't care. You better figure something out. So he's like, I got to go to Moab and get this girl something to eat. You know, black woman, you can't have them hungry right now. But then I have So just say if we'll take the first approach, that the husband is the one that said, you know, we're going to go to Moab. We're going to make a move. How many of you need to make a move in your life? Yeah, you got to make a move. We all got to make moves in our life. But we got to be careful about the moves that we make. Ain't wrong with somebody. Let's see what happened. It came to pass in those days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land in Bethlehem of Judea. And um, and so this, this family uh, went to sojourn in the country of Moab. He and his wife and two sons. Now the word sojourn means that he's not going to move there forever. He's just going to go there for a few minutes until God visits Israel again, Bethlehem, and give them bread. But until then, I'm going to go somewhere else. You know what I'm saying? And he understands God, his name, he understands the character of God because his name means my God is king. Even though God is angry with us right now, he ain't going to be angry forever. So one day he's going to give us some bread. So baby, we're just going to go down here and stay with these heathens for a few minutes. And then we'll come back, he thought. Mm -hmm. Verse 2. And the name of the man was Elimelech. My God is king. How many of you believe he lived up to his name? Because my God is king. Even though there's a famine in the land, I'm going to stay put, right? Why? Because my God is king. Even though there's coronavirus in the land, my God is going to take care of me. Why? Because my God is king. My God is king. How many of you know you need to live up to your name? Live up to your name. Lemonade. The name of the man was Lemonade. And his wife's name was Naomi, which means what? Pleasant. 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 And the name of his sons, Marline and Chilion, Ephraimites of Bethlehem, Judea. And they came into the country of Moab and continued there. They went down to Moab and lived there and stayed there. Well, let's see what happened while they were in Moab. And Elimelech, Naomi's husband, did what? Died. Die. He died. Left her a widow. In a strange land. He done carried this woman down to this place outside of the will of God and messed around and died on her. That's jacked up, isn't it? Yeah. Don't die on me. You know, you can get sick and we'll take you to the doctor and get well. But you're going to die. I ain't got no people here. I ain't got no sister I can call. I ain't no brother. My cousin ain't around here. And you're going to bring me down to this faraway place and die. That's messed up, man. In my studies, I was trying to see how far is Bethlehem you did to Moab. And I think I read that it. it's like over a thousand, two or three thousand miles away. That's a long ways from home, man. Yeah, it's a long time to get there, walking, and on a donkey. Virginia, you ever been a donkey before? Yeah, it, 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 ain't, it ain't fair like model bus. It takes a long time to drop a gallon, gallon, gallon in the desert and all that kind of stuff. But that's a long way. And now he done died on her. Let's move on. And died, left her with two boys. And then... She probably thought that she had to stay there now because she can't go back home with those boys like that. She, she went forsaken God. Now the boys are growing up now. So the boys found them some women in Moab. Hey man, how many know the women in Moab look good too, don't they? Mm-hmm. They found them some wives of the women of Moab. The name of the one was Ophar. Mm-hmm. And the name of the other was Ruth. And they dwelt there about how long? 
Ten years. I've been there for ten years. It's a long time, man. That'll be like 20, 30. Ten whole years. And more. Let's see what else happened. And Marlon and Chilion did what? Yeah. Died also, both of them. And the woman, who was the woman? Naomi was left of her two sons and her husband. That means Naomi lost her husband and both of her boys. Where? Well, in Moab. She made a move that wasn't a good move, right? And she went from bad to worse, from a famine in the land to losing her husband and her two boys. She can get another husband, but she can't get no more boys, can you? That's why they say. That's why they love the, 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 the boys so much, you know, like put the boys over the husband because they say, I can get another husband. <laughs> <laughs> Well, verse number six says, there are room, there's room for turnaround. Amen. Then she arose with her daughter-in-law that she might do what? Turn from where? From the country of Moab. Why? She heard that what? In the country, she heard while she was in Moab that God did what? He visited his people in doing what? Giving them bread. Now God just showed up in Bethlehem or oh, Judea. Oh, it's been a long time. Ten years down there. How many ever years she stayed down there with her husband before he died and, and all this and another thing. But now God has finally blessed us again in Bethlehem. Make man some life. He can't stay angry forever. He's not that type of God. He's he, he going to eventually visit you. He eventually going to give you a blessing. Amen, somebody. Well, she heard about it. And she said, I've been down here in Moab too long. I've lost my husband, lost my two boys. And life down here is just totally jacked up. I need to get up. From where I am, I need to go back home to where I belong. I need to get up and go home. It ain't been good to me down here. No, life has been rough for me. It's time for me to rise up and go back home. Amen, somebody. Amen. I, I believe God will take her back, too, when she decides to go back home. I believe God will take her back. Verse 6, and then she arose with her with her daughters-in-law that she might return from the country of Moab. Amen. From Moab. For she had heard in the country of Moab where God has blessed him so much, the news is coming down to the heathen nation that God has blessed his people with bread. Verse 7. Wherefore, she went forth out of the place where she was and her two daughters-in-laws with her and they went on the way to return unto the land of Judah. There's a lot of things going through her mind. You see, I don't know if I'm going to make it back. Why? Because it's a long journey and I, I'm a, just a woman traveling in these desert lands and people rape women and people kill women. I have no protection over my life, but I'm trusting in the God of heaven to get me back home. Amen. Amen. Only God, this is a miracle within itself. Only God can get her back home. Only God, El Shaddai, can protect her and watch over her and keep her safe from her enemies. Only God can get her back home. She says, I'm going back home, but I don't know if I'm going to get home. But I'm going to set my eyes on God help me to get home. Only you can help me to get home. Watch over me and protect me as I Go back where? Home. As I go back home. I want to be in the will of God now. I want to be in the ways of God. And if I don't make it, at least I die trying. I want to go back home. I want to get back in the favor of God. I want to be where God wants me to be. Verse 8. And Naomi said 
unto her two daughters-in-laws, go, return to your mother's house. Why? Because they done lost their husbands, right? Marlon and Chilion. And Naomi and Ophel and Ruth, they're walking together toward Bethlehem. Ophel and Ruth, they've never been to Bethlehem. They've never seen Bethlehem before, but they're walking. And, and, and so Naomi think that they are basically just escort, escorting her to a certain point. And then they're going to do what? Turn around and go back. So she says, okay, I've came to this point. Y'all go back to y'all mother's house. Okay? The Lord deal kindly with you and ye as you have dealt with the dead and with me. Verse 9. The Lord grant you that you may find favor each of you in the house of her husband. Then she kissed them. And they lifted up their voice and wept. They just crying. Three women crying, crying. They just crying. And Yom said, y'all going back. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray that the Lord bless y'all with a husband. I'm going to pray that y'all will be able to have children and family. And I will never see y'all again. But I thank you all for the kindness y'all have shown unto me and to my husband and my son. Verse 10. And they said unto her, surely, watch this now, we will return with thee unto thy people. The other said, turn again, my daughters. Why would ye go with me? Are there yet any more sons in my womb that they may be your husbands? And if Naomi had some other boys, her other sons would marry those girls and raise up seed to that son. But they only said, these are all I got. I ain't got the two. And both of them are gone. All right, let's read on right here. If I shall say, I, verse 12, middle verse 12, I hope if, there should have, if I should have a husband also tonight and should also bear sons, Will ye wait, tarry, wait for them until they are grown? Which ye uh, say, stay for them from having husbands? No, my daughters, for it grieveth me much for your sake that the hand of the Lord is going out against me. What are you saying now? Naomi is going to say this phrase a lot through this book, through the first part of this book. That God's hand went out against her. What does she mean? She's saying that all these things happened to me because God judge, is judging me for the decisions that we make. That we make. She believes that she was being punished by God for going down to Moab. She said, daughters, I feel bad that God took my son and in turn, took your husbands. You are young, beautiful women. You all deserve to have a husband and some children. I'm sad for you. All right, follow me a little bit more here. We're going to be out of here in just a few more verses. Verse 14. And they lifted up their voices and wept again. And Ophra kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth did wept. She clayed unto her. After Naomi explained everything to Ophel and Ruth, Ophel thought about it. Even though initially she's headed toward Bethlehem, just headed that way. She thought about it. You're right. When I go to Bethlehem, I may never get married again. When I go to Bethlehem, I may never have any children. I need to go back home. I need to go back to Moab. You're right. I want a husband. I want some children. I heard about your God. I kind of like him. 
But I don't know if I'm ready. Uh, have y'all ever seen y'all God? No, he's a God of faith. You got to believe in him. Uh, well, how does he look? We've never seen him before. He's a spirit. Over oh, there, so wait a minute, because you know, that's a nice looking God over there in Moab. He's decorated, he's colorful. And you want me to get somebody that I got to believe in? She said, mm, I think I'm going to go back to my people. She turned around. Let's follow this. Just a little while longer. Verse 14. They lifted their voices and went up and over kissed her mother-in-law. But Ruth clave unto her and said, and, and she said, Behold, thy sister-in-law is what? Okay. Going back unto her what? And unto her what? Uh, uh-huh. Wait a minute. It's a lot right there. Ophah could not accept this thing that I'm talking about, that you got to have faith in God. She's going back to her people. She's going back to her God. She set foot to following God. She just set foot to it. But when it was really, really time to step into the full manifestation of receiving his God by faith, she said, no, 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 I can't do it. I got too much to give up before I can do that. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. There's some people that does that with Christianity. They come to the door, but they don't want to come all the way in. Amen. You got to repent of your ways. Oh, I like Christ. I heard about what he did for me, and they just kiss him. And then they turn right back around and go back the other way. Amen, somebody. There's some people that come to the door, but they don't want to come in. Amen, somebody. Well, verse number 16, and Ruth says, Entreat me not to leave thee, or to turn from following after thee. For where you go, I will go. And where you lay down, I will lay down. Watch this now. Your people going to be what? My people. And your God going to be what? My God. Oh, that's shouting grounds right there. Ruth says, I'm going to leave my people. I'm going to leave these gods. I've never met your people. I never met your God. But I, by faith, want to receive everything that your God has for me. Amen, somebody. Amen. Where thou dies, I want to die. Where you were buried, that where I want to be buried. The Lord killed me. If, I, if, if nothing but death separates me from thee. In other words, Naomi, I'm fully committed to you. Verse 18, when she saw that she was steadfastly minded, this is what it means to become a Christian. You got to be steadfastly minded mm -hmm, to go with her. Then she left speaking unto her. Now let me just say this about Naomi. Some people say Naomi was so backslidden that she was, and she was so wrong by suggesting to these girls that they go back to their gods. Naomi should have been trying her very best to get these girls to embrace the God of Israel. Y'all understand what I'm saying? I'm going home to the house of bread. Y'all need to come with me. I know y'all been worshiping these idols of God for all these years, but y'all need to come with me and find out about the God of Israel. But she was so much out of the will of God that she tried to make these girls go back home. But thank God that God had put a hook in Ruth's heart. And she was hooked. The light that she saw in Naomi penetrated Ruth. And Ruth said, wherever you go, I'm going to go. Wherever you die, I'm going to die. Your people are going to be my people. Your God is going to be my God. Verse 19. So the two of them went 
until they came to Bethlehem. And it came to pass when they were come to Beth, Bethlehem, uh, Bethlehem that all the city was moved about them. And they said, is this pleasant? Somebody was going to say, Brother Jackson, she's been scorched by the sun. That she had that hard look on her face. You ever seen people look hard? You know, life has, has dealt them bad hands and they look hard. They look like they've been dealing with life. Like they've been wrestling with life. They've been wrestling with their problem. And they said, when they stepped into Bethlehem, that she used to have this pleasant, beautiful countenance. She used to have the glow of God on her face. But she's been in sin so long that people who hadn't seen her in a while, when they saw her, they said, I can't believe this Naomi. Naomi, what happened? You know, some people come up to your face and say, what happened? <laughs> what happened to you? <laughs> That's something to me. Like me, I'll be, I ain't going to say that. I'll be like, I wonder what happened. But I ain't got the nerve to go to my neck. What happened to you? That's how people get right in your face. What happened to you? You used to look better than that. I can't remember you looking like that. What happened? <laughs> they saw me on me like, what happened to you, Naomi? You used to have the glow of God on your face. Your skin used to be clear and clean. Naomi, we called you pleasant. When people came across you, we felt your spirit. We got happy when we saw you. But look at you, Naomi. What happened to you? What happened? I've been down in the land of sin. Sin caused you to pay more than you want to pay. It causes you to stay longer than you want to stay. And it makes you look like this. I got sin on my face. She said unto them, don't call me Naomi anymore. Call me Mara. Why? For the hand, for the Almighty has, has dealt very well, bitterly with me. I went out full when I first left the house of bread, y'all miss that, did y'all? Uh, uh, I went out full, but the Lord has brought me home empty. Don't call me Naomi anymore. Why? Because God has afflicted me. And it's all on my face. It's all in my demeanor and my mannerism. It's by the way I look, I look a mess. A hot mess now. God has been dealing with me. I'm a hot mess. I'm a hot mess. I got some stuff I got to clean up when I messed up. I got to start my life all over again. I got to, I, if, I, if I was a liar, I got to stop lying. If I was a cheater, I got to stop cheating. I got to clean it up now. I'm a hot mess. I'm a hot mess. I'm a hot mess. One of our things of this church is regeneration and restitution. We've had people come to our church who are Christian, Sister Robinson, but they got out of the will of God and God has brought them in here to restore them. And when they first come, they look like a hot mess. But after they stay here for a few months or so, they begin to change. And we have them here smelling all different kinds of ways. Yeah. And you used to run through here with some air freshener every morning until it started making my head hurt. And I was like, so the rocks have been up here spraying all that stuff. I can't stand the air freshener with me up headache and stuff. But after God works on them for a few months or so, they began to look different. Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Verse 22 for the last one. So Naomi returned. Amen. That's an amen right there. Amen. amen. She returned 
and Ruth the Moabitess, her daughter-in-law with her, which returned out of the land of Moab, and they came to Bethlehem when, in the beginning of all the harvest. Wait a minute. Sound like some bread is in the house now. Amen. Amen. I told you some highs and some lows and some highs. Started off real low. Low. My husband dead and my two sons dead. I mean, seeing them whip my face up. Used to be cute. <laughs> but seeing. Yeah. I think I saw this morning a guy that I went to high school with. And I was going to get Brother James and Brother Jackson. I think Brother James called him an old man. That guy. But I think I went to high school, graduated the same year with that guy. I mean, I ain't saying I'm all of that, but I sure don't look like him. You know what I'm saying? He looked like homemade sin. Done ate him up. Y'all, don't y'all have some relatives like that, some people that y'all know? And life will sin. Make them look 15, 20 years old. Even though y'all the same age. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's how Naomi was. Girl, what's, what happened to you? They sin. Sin done messed me up. Sin and jacked me up. I went out there trying to be cute and sin and messed me up. You ain't cute now. She said, I got bitterness in my heart. Why? Because God done judged me. Well, who are you mad at? Be mad at yourself. Don't be mad at God. Be mad at your husband. He dead. Your two boys are dead. Ain't nobody but you. But thank God. She did what? Turn it around. And girl Payne is going to get it back from here. They said Ruth starts off with a dark, dark picture. But we thank God that she turned it around. It happens to be a time when they harvest the wheat. Amen. It happens to be. It's a good time. It's going to get better. It's going to get better. But I just want to say, as we study the book of Ruth, we'll see that God is working through it all. He's working through it all. He's what? Working it out. Everything that Satan means for evil, God is going to work it out for our good, for the good of those who love him and those who have been called according to to his purpose. Amen, somebody. Just takes a little time. It's going to get better. I want to ask you to bow your head with me today. Maybe you're dealing with something in your life right now. It's time to turn it around. Turn it around. You'll find that God is working it out. He's working it out. Time to come back home. Time to come back home. Time to come back home. And you feel like you've been out into the world of sin, beating you up, done some things to you. It's time to go back home. Maybe you're a person who just came to the door of salvation, but you never stepped in. You'll be like Ophah, she kissed the door to heaven and went to hell. We invite you to be like Ruth that says your people are going to be my people and your God is going to be my God. 
I want the God of Israel. I want El Shaddai. I embrace him. That's you, we invite you right now to receive his son, Yahshua HaMashiach, into your heart as your Lord and Savior. You call upon the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. Those of you who have stepped your feet back toward the house of God, You'll see he'll turn it around for you. Yeah, he's going to turn it around. I feel it in my spirit. He's turning around. Let's turn it up a little bit for me. Maybe you know somebody who has stepped away from God. Your prayer for them right now, God, turn it around, turn it around, turn it around. Change is coming. That's what the book of Ruth teaches us that it's a change. Change is going to come. God is going to turn all of this around. The book of Ruth teaches us that it ain't about us. It's all about his son. He's doing all of this so that he can, he can put in motion. David's daddy got to be born. David got to be born. And through David comes Christ. It's all about the kingdom of God. Establishing his people. Oh, how many of you believe God can turn it around for you? The person that you're praying about, the person you're concerned about, that loved one, that son, that daughter, that relative, that grandchild, believe in your heart that God can turn it around, that God will turn it around, turn it around for him, say, turn it around for him. Forgive them for they do not what they do. Turn around for them. Turn it around. It ain't always going to be like this. God is working. Turn it around in your life. Okay? Oh, Naomi, I know you say your name is bitter right now. But God is going to turn it all around. He's going to turn it, turn it, turn it, turn it around. Let's stand as we close out in prayer. Well, as we pray, just raise your hand to the Lord. I want you to call somebody's name out right now. Just tell the Lord to turn it around for them. Turn it around. Turn it around. Maybe it's you. You got to call yourself out. Your names are just turning around. Around for me. God is going to turn some stuff around for me. I've been chosen to build his kingdom. Turn it around, turn it around, turn it around. Turn it around, Lord, turn it around. We set our feet to return back to Bethlehem. We want to go back home to the house of bread. We want to go back into the land of our people. We want to Go back to our God. We left our God, but we're turning around right now. We want, we want our God. We want, we want, we, we want, we want Him to be our King, King and Lord of Lords. We're turning around right now. God, turning around for that mother. Turning around for that dad. Turning around for that child. Turning around for that grandchild. Turning around, Father. Father, turning around for our people. Oh, we pray for that believer right now who set his or her heart to dwell in Moab. 
but they have not found peace and rest in the land. And we ask you right now, Father, to convict their hearts. They would turn around and say, I'm going to go to Bethlehem. I need to go back to Bethlehem. I need to go back to the place of God. We ask you to, 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 to just draw them right now. We thank you for doing so right now. Thank you for turning things around. We give you honor and glory and praise today. We thank you for the book of Ruth and thank you for the messages that are in the book of Ruth. May they be a blessing to us and those who hear your word. Father, we just want to just commit this day and this week into your hands. And we know that you are working in our lives, working in our church. And we want to just give you honor and glory. It's in the name of your son, Yahshua, that we pray. Amen. 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 Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, Lord. My strength and my redeemer.